Boris Johnson has apologised at the COVID inquiry for the way the government handled the pandemic, saying it had underestimated the challenge. During around six hours of evidence, he admitted he should have realised sooner how serious the situation was and said he was sorry for the pain, loss and suffering of victims and families. Much of today focused on the start of the pandemic and the timing of COVID measures. The UK announced a lockdown on March the 23rd, 2020. That first lockdown stayed in place until June. Boris Johnson then put England into a second full lockdown in November of the same year, as well as a third full lockdown in January 2021. Our deputy political editor Vicky Young sent this report. A lot has been said by a lot of people about Boris Johnson's time in number 10. He was confronted by the biggest challenge to face a prime minister in peacetime, not just a health crisis, but an economic one too. He's been accused of acting too late and of lying about what went on here. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. This was Mr Johnson's chance to give his side of the story and he began with an apology. Can I just say how glad I am to be at this uh, inquiry and uh, how sorry I am for the, the pain and the loss and the suffering sit down. of please, the please stop. COVID Johnson. victims. Please sit down. Right, could ushers, please, could you ask them to leave? These were the four women thrown out for interrupting and said they'd never accept Mr Johnson's apology. 11 municipalities in Italy. Back inside, questions about February 2020. Coronavirus had spread to Italy and the Cabinet had discussed what plans were in place here. I look at all this stuff in which we seem so oblivious with, that, with, with horror now. I mean, we, we, we should, have, we should have, have twigged. We should collectively have twigged uh, much sooner. I should have twigged. When the seriousness of the virus was understood, it led to this lockdown. Several former colleagues described Mr Johnson as indecisive. He says he was weighing up difficult options. I've got the Chancellor of the Exchequer with me saying that there's a risk to the UK bond markets and our ability to raise sovereign debt. This matters massively to people in this country. I have to go through the arguments. And, and that is what I was doing. Did you consider the argument against lockdown or did you? I, 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 I'm afraid to say at that stage, I gave it pretty short shrift because I thought that my job was to protect human life. I had no other, I had no other tool, literally nothing else. There were some uncomfortable questions about the culture in number 10. Former chief advisor Dominic Cummings wrote sweary messages criticising colleagues, including his boss. I, you know, I knew that some people were, uh, were difficult. I didn't know how difficult they were, clearly. Um, but I, I thought it was better on the whole for the country to have a, a, a disputatious culture in number 10 than one that was quietly acquiescent. That was certainly a positive spin on a workplace atmosphere many described as toxic. And Boris Johnson seemed emotional as he reflected on the first year of the pandemic. We have to be realistic about 2020, the whole year, that whole tragic, tragic year. We did lock down, but then it bounced back after we'd unlocked. Today, Boris Johnson denied that he failed to show leadership during the pandemic. He said it wasn't indecisiveness. He was simply weighing up options that all had terrible downsides. He did admit that mistakes were made, but said it was a collective failure. Scientists, politicians and officials all underestimating how serious the pandemic was. Boris Johnson will be back here tomorrow to give further evidence. Vicky Young, BBC News, Westminster. Well, there were families and campaigners inside and outside the COVID inquiry today. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, spoke to some of them about Boris Johnson's evidence. I have cognitive issues. I find it difficult to walk very far without having to rest or I collapse. But today is so important. I've come from South London today. I'm here primarily for my dad. Jean and Anthony, both at the inquiry today, have lost so much in different ways because of COVID-19. Jean's father died in April 2020 in a care home after getting the virus. 
Anthony was a war correspondent, but now because of long COVID, every day is a struggle. He can no longer work. Outside the inquiry, they met others who've lost loved ones or suffered with the lasting consequences of the virus. The scenes from Italy really rattled me. At a distance, Jim, who's a consultant, is watching the inquiry in breaks from his hospital shift. If you look at our ITU, there are two non-corona patients. Working in intensive care in the first wave of COVID, he had to help manage the surge of seriously ill patients. Listening to Boris Johnson, that build-up period, um, you know, from my perspective, we were desperate for the, for the lockdown. We, we were terrified that we were going to be overrun with patients and that we would be put into the most awful ethical situation. Was it Matt Hancock last week? Having heard Boris Johnson, Jean was sceptical about the explanations of decisions on lockdowns. He made reference to the scientists quite a few times. Well, they didn't say anything. You know, behavioural uh, fatigue and bounce back and, you know, and, and that's why they delayed locking down. So he's almost pushing the blame onto the scientists um, and, and, and absolving himself of that, that um, uh, responsibility as Prime Minister to make those decisions. Anthony and his wife are both living with the continuing symptoms known as long COVID. It has taken everything we hold dear from us. We've lost everything. We exist now on benefits for all of our income. So what did he make of Boris Johnson's apology? They're words, aren't they? It makes, it makes a headline, Boris says sorry, but what does it change? There's no doubt this is a highly significant day for campaigners, but there'll be more to come when the inquiry in its later stages looks in more detail at the response of the NHS to the COVID crisis and what happened in care homes. Jean will be coming back when Rishi Sunak gives evidence. For Anthony, the physical effort of getting there may be too much. Hugh Pym, BBC News.